Hi, I'm Keith Kirkpatrick, Research Director with the Futurum Group. Thanks and welcome to 6.5 on the Road. Today, I'm really happy to have Matt Healy, Director of Product Marketing with Pegasystems here as my guest. Welcome, Matt. Hey, thanks for having me, Keith. So, it has really been a really interesting and exciting two days here at Pega World. Perhaps you can kind of talk to me about some of the things that really kind of made an impression for you and for some of your customers. Yeah, I mean, Pega World is uh, the best time of year um, for a couple of reasons. I love Las Vegas. And then, of course, with Pega World being in Las Vegas, you also get to talk about innovative capabilities. Uh, and, it, I, you know, there's a ton of new capabilities which we got the opportunity to announce over the past couple of days. Uh, and really, a couple of the, of the themes that have stood out. Uh, are around you know accelerated delivery and development mm -hmm. of transformational applications uh, and we have some cool new stuff there which I'm sure we'll sure. talk about uh, and you heard you know um, Deutsche Telekom on the keynote stage yes. talk about how they're they're using all of the latest and greatest to modernize their estate really quickly uh, and then you know once those applications are built, the focus is on uh, making sure the employees and the customers who engage with them uh, have a great experience and you know have everything they need to get their job done and you know get services done with the businesses who they engage with. And we heard a ton of great stories there too. Right. Well, Matt, you mentioned something really interesting. If we think about what's going on with uh, artificial intelligence automation, it seems like the most important thing to to your customers really is it's how can we get this done quickly. We need to really focus on time to value because the pace of innovation is so fast right now. If it takes six, eight, 10, 15 months to implement something, the value is gone. Yeah. Yeah. And Pega has been in the AI game for, you know, over 20 years now. Um, and that's all st statistical. Hard word to say, predictive AI yep. um, for the purposes of you know really personalizing customer experiences. So even there, we were focused on accelerated time to value through what we call next best action designer, mm -hmm. which lets marketers and <clears throat> CX leads define their strategies, and then the platform automatically creates AI algorithms behind the scenes sure. uh, that personalize customer experiences and really drive out that strategy across all your channels. Um, so you know that's kind of been core to our DNA. DNA is responsible mm -hmm. and fast uh, application of AI. Right. So when generative AI came around, you know, a well, couple, that was, yeah. <laughs> a couple months ago, it right. feels like it forever feels like ago. It. Right. Um, but you know, we really we were set up to uh, apply those capabilities as well in a way that uh, our clients are going to get value fast, um, but also with sort of enterprise grade governance, control, security, trust built in. You know, I'm glad you mentioned that because I was uh, in a round table with your CEO, Alan Treffler, who, who said that. He said, you know, the platform that you guys have been building over the past several years, that was already in the works. And then generative AI came around. And what he said, which was really interesting to me is, when we look back and we look at the impact of generative AI, we wouldn't change a thing based on how the platform is architected because it really is built for change. And, you know, there's really no bigger change than generative AI. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, core to that platform, probably some of the reasons he was saying this is, um, you know, it's built for large enterprises mm -hmm. and that's who uh, Pega partners with. Right. And they need things like the ability to um, vary their processes and their decisions across lines of business and global regions. Mm -hmm. uh, they need things like um, auditability, tracking, reporting. Sure. Um, they need to be able to control you know, the, the, the performance of their models. And all of that was built beforehand. So generative AI just plugs right in, which is right. great. Right. You know, one of the other things that, that really kind of strikes me when, you know, I talk with customers here or, or even Pega employees is, again, is Pega's commitment to be building something that is not only robust, but is trusted, is safe, and perhaps, as you mentioned, is scalable. Yeah. I mean, you heard the, uh, the uh, VA. Yeah yesterday talk about how they've been using Pega to move from a fax-based, mail-based, paper-based process um, to something that can support more digital engagements with you know these veterans who need yep. to get services done. Um, so obviously it's been really core to, you, know, you can't mess something like that up. Right. So we've had to sort of perfect uh, enterprise scalability, performance, reliability um, for the world's most important organizations and agencies. Right. Well, the other, the other real component there, and we heard a lot about this in the popular press, sometimes it gets a little distorted, but this issue of AI and privacy, mm. specifically data privacy, and Pega has a very strong position on this. Perhaps you could 
Yeah, yeah. Um, so when we look at generative AI, I've had the opportunity myself to engage with a ton of uh, IT leaders, data leaders who are thinking about how they're going to apply it. So I get to hear about the risks and some of the questions sure. that they have around it. Um, so obviously, data privacy is one, uh, but then there's others like, you know, uh, the the large language model yeah. uh, market itself is very <laughs> volatile, right. right? New models pop up, CEOs get ousted. It's just all over the place. So, sure. You know, uh, enterprises are are thinking ahead, and they're like, well, if I pin my whole architecture to one model, right. How is that going to set me up for the future? Um, and then, of course, governance. You know, visibility is really important. Seeing like what is what is AI doing across my operation? Right. Who's using it for what purposes? So that sort of informed our sort of generative AI architecture okay. and how we've applied it. So built into all generative AI capabilities, um, they're all built on the same architecture. And that architecture brings uh, privacy control. Okay. So you can do things like uh, mask prompts mask up potential PII, PII in right. the prompts um, prior to any data getting sent over the wire to a large language model. Mm -hmm. uh, it includes model flexibility, okay. uh, which has allowed us, you know, just this week to start to uh, announce that we're adding additional model support. Yes, I saw that. The so next expanding one, yeah. beyond Azure OpenAI to AWS and to Google. Uh, and then all of this uh, is also benefited by like reporting governance visibility so you can see what's going on. Sure. Well, it sounds like, you know, given a lot of the, the customers that you work with, they operate in very kind of regulated industries or, or environments. And, and that seems to be a real point of strength for you because you never want to start from a, you know, a place of, oh my gosh, I can do anything and then have to work into those industries. It's always great to be able to kind of start there as your starting point because really who doesn't want more controls and in, in, in security? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you look at the brand list. It's yeah. these people <laughs> cannot just be applying things willy nilly. So right. Well, I just want to pivot a little bit uh, to another announcement that was really, really interesting. You, you've announced some enhancements to Blueprint. Maybe you can first tar start by explaining what is Blueprint and why is that important to your customers. Oh yeah. Um, so Blueprint is incredibly exciting. Uh, so uh, these projects that Pega delivers on these applications, these solutions. They're not, you know, when you think about workflow, there's different grades of workflows. Sure. It's a spectrum. Pega is really, really good and finds ourselves uh, operating at the mission critical, you know, okay. multi line of business, end to end customer journey spectrum. So these aren't small departmental right. workflows. Uh, and what that means is you need to bring together 10, 15, 20 different people mm -hmm. in order to design out that application get all their input, paint the vision that they're all going to agree upon, which is great, and then you know turn that into requirements, and then turn those requirements into user stories, right. turn it into an architecture, turn that into you know uh, the actual PEGA components which you're going to build uh, along the way. That whole design process takes weeks, if not months. Right. Uh, so we really see a massive opportunity to shorten that and right. allow teams to um, see value faster and hit the ground running. And that's that's really what Blueprint is focused on. Okay. It lets uh, business and IT teams collaborate on an application design uh, together in a SaaS platform. And throughout the journey, they get generative AI suggestions. Okay. So uh, rather than starting from scratch, they're building on uh, something which has best practices incorporated into it. So this is a, a real alternative to the sort of back of the napkin. I got an idea and let me pass that napkin around <laughs> to 30 different departments and try to figure out how this is going to work. Now, I, I got a chance to go down to the Innovation Hub and actually play around with it and start to build my own application. And I found it really, really intuitive in terms of, you know, even me just being able to go, hey, I'd like to build a billing application. So where is, where are all these frameworks coming from? Because I saw there were just tons of different types of applications. Where's all that coming from? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, Pega has 40 years Mm -hmm. of helping the world's large, largest organizations solve different problems. So we've done uh, many different types of projects over and over and over again. Okay. Uh, so we've used that expertise and incorporated it into Blueprint. Okay. So when you uh, fill in your requirements, you know, the first part of creating a Blueprint is defining what you're looking to automate. Right. What are your goals, imperatives? What's your business problem? What are your processes? And then Generative AI will create a template for you. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not just going to pull from the internet. It does pull from, you know, uh, GPT 3.5, right. but it's also informed 
by the, that 40 years of sure. experience. So those templates are baked in as well. Right. Now, to be clear, though, uh, and I want to make sure that we're clear on this, you're not pulling from customer data or anything like that to build these, correct? No, yeah. So obviously, okay. we talked about enterprise yeah. privacy data yeah. being really important. So that's built in the blueprint as well. That We're not training any AI on customer data. Nothing is visible across lines. So right. yeah, security right. is important. Right. Now, in the future, where do you see blueprint going? I mean, Alan talked a little bit about some potential future uh, enhancements, but I wanted to ask you just to make sure we're not violating any NDAs <laughs> or anything like that. No, yeah. So, um, I mean, just this week during the keynotes and at the Innovation Hub, uh, you saw what I think is the coolest blueprint feature to date, which is live application preview, yep. uh, which I'm super excited about. So, you know, the whole uh, philosophy around Pega, the differentiation is, is that you're able to define a workflow mm -hmm. in one place, an end-to-end -end customer journey, and then embed that into the experiences for the people who, who need to engage with it. Mm. So plug it into a customer self-service, your customer service desktop, your back office portal, and drive that end-to-end -end automation consistently. Well, you can now visualize that in Blueprint. Mm. So at any point, pull up your, your preview of your application and see how it manifests across all those channels, right. which is absolutely mind-blowing. Right. In terms of where we're going, we heard Deutsche Telekom talk about this modernization project. Yep. We have a, a lot of clients who have sort of seen the opportunity in terms of blueprint in a modernization uh, space mm -hmm. and how it might be able to help accelerate reimagining, redesigning workflows. But modernizations also have to be informed by where you're coming from. Right. So we introduced uh, a BPMN import. You know, being able to take legacy uh, business process flows sure. and start a blueprint based off of those. And, uh, you know, I hope I'm not violating anything here, but uh, I, I hope to see that set of uh, assets which you can start a blueprint from expand over the next couple of weeks, months, and, and years. I, I think that will be really interesting because if you think about the ways that, that organizations, they tend to not take that you know sort of zero to 100 approach is more of an evolutionary approach they have these existing processes and workflows and they're looking at ways that they can evolve them to a future you know transformative uh, nature because of the fact that that's you know the economic realities the yeah. you know human realities of, of trying to accept change so that sounds great yeah yeah and the other thing um, that's really cool at the innovation of uh, that I saw is uh, one form of legacy input is process mining analysis. Yep. Being able to really just take the event logs from your legacy apps and find how processes are run and where the inefficiencies lie. So that's great, but you know, what if you could inform a future application based on that? So there's a booth with a demo showing process mining analysis and then filtering out all of our inefficiencies that we don't want to bring forward right. and then pushing an optimized process into Blueprint to re, you know, tweak and then take forward. That to me seems like a real differentiator for Pega because if you think about, you know, a lot of the generative AI use cases that are kind of centered around productivity, you know, case summarization, content generation, that's all well and good, but let's be honest, everybody has that now. <laughs> <laughs> so, and and to Pega's credit, uh, I was in a session where they, uh, I think it was uh, Don Sherman actually said, yes, we know everyone has that. We have ours, we like ours, but really our differentiation is going to be uh, you know, around what you can do to actually really assess workflows, see the inefficiency, and then create new ones that really accelerate uh, productivity and, and efficiency. Yeah, yeah, AI for transformation, as yep. we're calling it. So um, we're definitely super focused on that. Although right. I will say, I will add, I think we're a little differentiated in all the right. productivity space as well. So, okay. you know, all of the uh, Gen AI assistance capabilities for customer service agents for back office employees. Mm -hmm. You're right, everyone has their little widgets. That's right, sure. Which is great. But what, not, what everyone doesn't have is sort of the connective tissue to all of the data that uh, a generative AI assistant is going to need in mm -hmm. order to actually deliver value. Right. Uh, so Pega, we sort of have that that you know end-to-end -end workflow architecture, right. which I talked about. And the data there. And that oh, ties right. in all the data, mm -hmm. all the knowledge, all the AI predictions, all of the you know everything you need to actually make a powerful Gen AI agent. Right. Well, Matt, I asked this question the last time I was here last year of of my guests, and I'll ask this for you. What can we expect sitting here next year at this time? What will have happened or what do you expect will happen and what can we expect from Pega in the months to come? 
Uh, well, first off, um, Celtics will have won an NBA championship okay. by then. We'll see. Probably will be competing for, you know, back to back. So that's going to be very exciting for me. All right. Um, but then in terms of Pega World, you know, I think we're going to continue to pay off on that mission, which we said last Pega World to double de developer productivity. Yep. I'm not saying we're going to double it again, but we have some pl stuff planned to, you know, add some additional value there sure. to take it to the next level. So I'm excited about that. And then, of course, we are going to see a ton of uh, amazing client stories, as we always do. Right. But this time, I'm really excited because they're going to be around the adoption of generative AI capabilities across the world's largest organizations. And who else can say that? So I'm really excited. Great. Well, thank you so much for sharing, Matt. This has been great, and I uh, you know, wish you continued success in the year ahead. Awesome. You as well. Thanks for having me. Thank you. All right. Uh, I have been Keith Kirkpatrick with the Futurum Group, and this was 6.5 On the Road, and we'll see you again really soon.